Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. I hope everyone's doing well and happy Halloween, or whenever you happen to watch this video, please stick around to the end for some important information. Today we are going to be talking about the disappearance of Michelle Vanek. Some of you may be familiar with this case already. I'm going to go over all the details because just recently we've had some major developments in the case. Michelle was a 35-year-old mother of four from the Lakewood area. She went missing while on a hike to the Mount of the Holy Cross on September 24th of 2005. She was a professional marathon runner. She was fairly new to hiking the mountains. She was hiking with one of her friends named Eric. He was much more experienced and had already completed many of Colorado's 14ers, which are summits that are 14,000 feet or more. This was Michelle's first attempt at one of these 14ers. According to statements, the pair had intended to take the standard northeast ridge route, but ended up on one of the more difficult trails, the halo route. And based on what Eric said, this was because of some confusion they had at one of the trailheads. This is a picture of Michelle on that day. The pair had been hiking for almost five hours when Eric noticed that Michelle was starting to fall roughly 50 feet behind him at times. He could tell that she was struggling. They finally stopped roughly 400 yards from the summit. Michelle said that she was just thoroughly exhausted. She was out of water and she just couldn't go any higher. According to the incident report, Eric told investigators that he offered to take her pack, but she insisted no. He then insisted that they turn around. She again said no. According to Eric, he wanted to turn around. She was also insistent that she wanted him to be able to finish his hike to the summit. She said that she would start down the path. He gave her explicit directions on how to get down he gave her some extra water and that is when the two separated this is the last picture that we have of her eric told the authorities that they had been climbing through switchbacks up the slope until they reached a small stone hut built in the 1930s he said that he knew that they were never going to be able to make it back by the time that they had originally planned he was extremely worried about his friend however she insisted that he move on he thought he would just make it to the summit turn around be able to meet up with her because at this point he had already summited over 38 of colorado's 14ers after descending he immediately knew that there was a problem he contacted search and rescue this led to Colorado State's biggest search and rescue event that ever had taken place in the state. Over 800 volunteers came out. They had helicopters, people on the ground. The Vail Mountain Rescue Group was instrumental in working this case and has been instrumental in keeping this case alive, which I'm going to talk more about here coming up. These are some actual pictures from the search and one of the actual helicopters that was dispatched to help aid in that search. Unfortunately, throughout all their efforts and the largest scale search that Colorado had ever seen, they found nothing. Despite these setbacks, the search and rescue teams went on. This was highly covered in the media. At the time, they were using all their efforts if any of you are wondering, drones were kind of in their infancy at this point. They had just been approved for civilian use throughout the country. So they were calling out all the stops. But even with that, unfortunately, after roughly 10 days of more than 800 volunteers searching, the search had to be called off because massive amounts of snow started moving into the area and hindered the ground teams from searching any further into the areas that they had planned on searching. This is important to remember and you'll soon understand why. At the time though, it was like Michelle Vanek just disappeared into thin air. People in the area of course kept looking as did her family, but a man by the name of Scott Beebe who at the time was not involved in search and rescue. He was an expert hiker. He eventually joined the Vail Mountain Rescue Team in 2010, and now he is the president of that foundation, and I believe that he is one of the heroes in this case because of his continued efforts, his continued persistence on this case. 
He's even quoted in saying, when this case happened, he kept all the old newspaper articles. He said anytime they were out on another search, he reminded them of Michelle, what she was wearing, things to possibly look for. The case just never left him. Just last year in 2022, a man and his son who were bushwhacking off trail located a boot in this area circled in blue which is an area that you have to bushwhack to get to this is a picture that they took of the boot that they found they did exactly what they should have done they took pictures they noted the location they went back immediately contacted the authorities including the Vail mountain rescue group the authorities and the Vail mountain rescue group sent out teams this is an actual picture of the maps that they did in the center there under that first era is where they found the boot unfortunately due to weather and snow they were unable to search any further they were unable to find the boot during their first search thankfully the man who originally found the boot offered to lead him and Scott Beebe, the president of the Vail Mountain Rescue Group, back to the location. They were able to recover the brute and bring it back to the Eagle County Sheriff's Office, who eventually confirmed that it was, in fact, Michelle Vanek's boot. Scott Beebe is quoted in saying, We have a clue. It's the first clue in 18 years. They did try sending out search volunteers to do what's called a scuff search in and around the area of the boot, looking for anything, types of evidence like clothing, any scuffs or marks on the rocks or anything in the area that possibly could have given them more information. What they finally realized was that during the original search, they thought that because most people according to reports, when they go missing on this particular trail and area, they tend to head west or east. In Michelle's case, she actually headed north into a very, very remote area where hikers almost never go. It's a place where you need to bushwhack to get to. I want to bring you back to the original search and rescue efforts. They were actually going to go into that area Due to weather on the last day of the original search where they were going to go into this area, they got almost 20 inches of new snow which made most of these areas impassable. They waited, unfortunately they got more snow, eventually the search just had to be called off. Once the boot was found and springtime came around, they brought in various dogs, including cadaver dogs, to in and around the area of the boot, hoping to find any possible remains or any other clues that could lead them to her remains. Unfortunately, they were unable to find anything. The boot that was found was a Sorel Aztec boot, which was obviously damaged by weather and the elements, and possibly animals over the years. They did note that underneath the grass had not grown. They were fairly certain that they would find her remains in the area. But this led Scott Beebe and other investigators to come to the conclusion that most likely what happened was that on that day, Michelle took a wrong turn at what is known to be very confusing trail markers in this area unfortunately led her to go in the wrong direction into the northern area where they believe that she succumbed to hypothermia. Over the years people have tried to blame the hiking partner, her husband possibly. All these people were extremely cooperative. They all provided DNA samples. Her hiking partner was very upset about this whole thing. He tried to stop her that day. He did everything that he could and sometimes these accidents just happen. Eric has expressed much regret and sadness that they did separate that day and I can only imagine what he's going through and what he has gone through. I just hope and pray that her remains will be found so that her family can finally begin to heal and have that closure. I want to dedicate this video to Michelle Vanek, her family, her friends, all the search and rescue teams that went out looking for, especially the Vail Mountain Rescue Group and Scott Beebe for his dedication to solving and finding more information about this case. Thank you all for watching. As always, I appreciate all your feedback and comments. 
Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. Hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me till the end. I hope everyone is having a great week and doing well. Please, if you have any case suggestions or any comments, suggestions for any type of thing, please either leave it in the comment or my email, which I'll have in the description. If you'd like to make a donation to the channel, it would really, really help me out. I'll have all that information in the description as well. I'm still trying to figure out how to put that donation button on the channel. If you'd like to be entered into the next coin giveaway, all you need to do is leave me a comment about a case, case suggestion, or about this case or any other cases that I've covered and let me know you want to be entered into that coin giveaway. I will be doing that sometime in the next week or so whenever that coin comes in. I want to say thank you to all my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, I'd ask you to please consider subscribing. I'm always willing to work on any case that you bring to me or any comment or anything that you think might improve the channel. All right, see you next time.